Welcome back to Auror Mechanics. Today we're going to show you how to remove and replace the radiator support. Okay, this one right here, guys, on a Volkswagen Jetta or Golf fifth generation. This should cover years from 2005 all the way until 2010. Stay with us to see how we're going to do that, and don't forget to subscribe for one new video every day. Okay, first we will need to uh, use a T30 socket. Okay, let's start looking right here. So we need to remove that bolt right there as you can see in this is on the front right side facing the engine so it's kind of like a screw not even a bolt and one on the left side as well so all together you have two bolts two screws that you need to remove okay just like that and now on the bottom you have two more with a few screwdriver okay right there that you need to remove and also are hidden as you can see right there so you need to get them loose, okay, like that. And there is one on this side as well, right there. And you need to get them loose all the way. Sometimes they don't come out because they're in an angle. This one, this, but the one there didn't. And now, there is a few clips right here that you need to push in, like that. Okay, and there is one here as well. And, okay, once you do that, okay, you can see the grill start coming out. Now there is a clip right here that you need to pull out as well, okay, and this one here is still holding a little bit because it doesn't want to come out of the hole, but okay, that's, that's how you remove it guys. Okay, and those were actually, they fell off, so you, you have to make sure that you have those metal, metal plates right here, you see this one is missing. This one fell off and the other one as well, we need to install it because otherwise you won't be able to get the bottom screws tighten when you install okay right, guys first uh, what you need to do now you need to uh, jack up the car leave it on jack stands because we'll need to be laying underneath the phone bumper to remove a few bolts and screws so okay once we have it in the air and if you have the key on the ignition you can actually push on the tire and turn the tire from the outside like that because we need to remove uh, a, a couple of screws right here, okay, with a T25 right there. We need to remove this screw as you can see. And they get pretty bad if you, if you have water and rust in those things. Okay, as you can see the one on the bottom and now one right there. And the third one on top right there. So that's what they look like, they're not very long but they don't go real easy if the, if the vehicle is older and have more miles on it. And after that you need to go to the passenger side and again the same thing you need to turn the tire all the way to the left now. You can just push it like that and you need to remove the same three screws that we removed on the other side. Okay one there, that little impact it's pretty good deal it saves us quite a bit of time. Okay one there, one on top. And all you need to do is just pull them out now. Okay, just like that. Okay, now, now we have a fourth one that uh, we also will need to remove right there, as you can see where it was. And uh, after that, there is one that's on top that holds the bumper to towards the fender and it's facing that way. So we will need to remove this one as well, as you can see where it is. So uh, we need to do that same procedure on the other side as well okay that's what this one looks like as you can see so we need to actually go to the other side now and remove these two screws that we did here we we just forgot about those so now we need to go and do the one there and the one that holds the, toward, towards the fender there okay you see it's here a little bit here on this side, so we'll have less room to show you guys, but you'll be able to, to, to find it. It's the same way like the other one, right there. Okay, that's what it looks like. It's, it's identical, the same, the same screw like the other ones. Next thing we'll need to go underneath the vehicle and with that T25, okay, right there in the corner, there is one ball that we'll need to remove, one screw. And there is many now, okay, so second so far. There is quite a few that we'll need to do. This one is with a T20 now. 
Okay, there is two actually. They are next to each other. Now with the T25, again, you just keep going that way. Okay, you can see the one right there. Now if you have the, uh, the engine under cover, you need to remove this one as well. It's with the T25. Then you just keep going down the bumper and there is many right there, there is two of them. One is with the T20, one is with the T25 right there. Just the same thing that we did here and one in the corner as well. Okay, and that's the T20 that we need now for the other side. Okay, so as you can see, we removed all of them on the bottom. Next with the T25 right here, two more screws as you can see on top of the bumper where uh, under the grill actually, that's where the grill covers here. Okay, now you have to be careful because nothing else is holding it, so if you just pull on it a little bit, it's going to come out of the side lights. Okay, like that. And the bumper cover guys will come off. What we need to do now, we need to unhook all the wires. So uh, we have the turn signals right here, so you need to pull, pull the wire out. And if you have fog lights, you have to undo those as well. Okay, huh? this is the bumper cover right here. So right here now we have one screw. Okay, this is with T T25 right there. One on the top. This one you can actually easy, but the other one you can't. Okay, just like that. And after that, there is one more right there. You can see where that thing is. inconvenient right there and now you can just pull it out a little bit pull up it comes only in a certain angle guys there okay as you can see just like that you can pull this side out first and now we have the wires right here that we will need to undo uh, we it's really limited room guys here but we'll show you once we once we remove it what you need to do on the clip so it can release and you can remove the the line okay it's not very good design okay you can hear it clicking and coming out of there okay and now again only in a certain angle that it comes out but it will come out you just need to mess with it okay and Okay, so you need to push right there and it will release the clip for the headlight. Alright guys, and next you need to remove the other headlight the same way we did, we did the left one. Uh, we don't need to remove the fender, we just remove the fender because we need it for another vehicle. So stay with us to see how we are going to remove the radiator support now. You need to make sure that you unhook the battery because we will be uh, unhooking the airbag sensors. And now that's the uh, cable for the, for the hood, the hood latch. So you need to open it right there, as you can see, like that. And once you open it, you need to unhook it, but make sure that you not uh, close the hood now. Even if you do, you can reach it through the headlight to unlock it, but just, just be very careful. You need to open it like that. And as you can see, that's where the other one goes, and you can unhook it like that, because this one will stay on the radiator support. Now you need to remove that cap right here. And after that, you need to pull that hose up. Okay, like that and pull it out of the way. Okay, that's for the air, air box right here for the air intake. And you can remove this one as well. A few clips holding it there if you need to. Okay, it's out of the way now. Okay, now we need to remove a couple of bolts on top with the T30 right there. Two there and two in this corner as well. So all together four on top. Okay. Just like that. It's not a very complicated procedure, it's just time consuming and people charge ridiculous amount of money for that. Okay, now uh, one more screw right there with the same T30. It's, uh, it's not as convenient, but if you can remove that one if you want to, but you don't have to. So you can just pull the screw like that and there is one identical on this side, so remove this one as well here. Now underneath, as you can see, there is one over there, same one, so with the same tool, as you can see, the same, same size. 
they, they like to use those a lot and there is identical to this one on the other side as well underneath there and there is one actually hidden right there that you need to remove as well you can see right there where it is I can get a better view okay now we will actually go ahead and remove those right here now uh, because there is one ball that will be really hard to get later right here so with the T25 you get guys right here in the hole there is uh, there is one one screw that you need to remove right there okay it's really hard to show you exactly exactly where it is but it's right there in the hole you'll feel it okay and there is one more on this side and it's identical to the other side as well and now you can remove that one out of the way and uh, you can actually reach this one here now easier this one on this side and we're going to do identical thing on this side we need to remove this one as well that's the one that supports the headlight there okay just two screws holding it the same thing on the side. okay now we can actually use a little impact and save us some time right there so as you can see this one and this one that we already removed on the other side we are doing the same procedure on this side it's pretty much symmetrical so far what you have on the left you have on the right as well now we have two more that we need to remove right there the same, same two t surgery. okay just like that okay now with a 16 millimeter sock big bolts that hold the crash button right there two on top two on bottom that's on the passenger side and on the driver side the same thing so all together you need to remove eight bolts okay one there okay and on this one right there so now you can go ahead after you remove those and you can remove the crash bumper out of the way as you can see just like that. Next you need to remove the temperature sensor so you can remove that clip right here, pull it out, out of the metal, metal clips right there so it's not holding any cables now. And now we will need to remove a couple more screws. Okay so this bolt right here. And one on this side as well, right there. You can see just like that. Okay, now right there, there is one wire that we need to un uh, unhook. That's for the hood to, to tell you if the hood is open or closed. So you make sure that you, you install this one later as well. You don't forget about it. Okay, now you can grab it and pull it out. Just be very careful and gentle. It will come out of the radiators, but it's still holding the airbag sensor, but we need to pull it out a little bit so we have more room to access the wires. Okay, you can see how much it came out already. Okay, and as you can see, it came out a lot. Now what we, and what we need to do, we need to uh, unbolt the airbag sensors right there, the crash sensor. So with the T25. So there is two screws that we need to remove right there as you can see. So once you remove those uh, you'll be able to pull the airbag sensor out. That's why we need to unhook the battery guys because it's a uh, it's very very dangerous procedure. If you don't you might activate the airbags and cause injuries or even it will cost you a lot of money to replace something like that. Okay, right there. And you can just leave it on, on the car, but do not drive the car like that until you install everything back together the, the way it should be. And it's the same procedure for this one as well, just two, two bolts holding it. Okay, once you, you do that, you can just go ahead and pull the radiator support out. Okay, as you can see, just like that, that's how simple it is. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and give us a like. We have a new video on our channel every day.